this thing because it is dangerous and I ain't kidding you. This is my 1974 Monte Carlo Land D edition. I know absolutely nothing about it. I bought it sight unseen on Facebook, dropped her off the shop, haven't even driven it. So I'm going to do the right thing and throw a supercharger on it. Seems right. Nope. Probably the wrong thing to do. Is this a good zip tie? Got this rig somewhere in Wisconsin. Don't remember where. There's no tags or nothing on it. 74 model, like I said, she's got the egg crate grill, slightly redesigned front end. It's gonna be a second generation. She's been painted on expertly. That's the original paint, kind of a light up blue. It's too bad they painted on her. Again, she's the land day option. So you get the quarter vinyl here, and there's a little bit of the vinyl top that's left. So it was a blue on blue. So you get the vinyl, you get the sport mirrors, and then it would have had some turbine wheels on her. Them are gone. Now they got these Cooper Cabras, some sort of chromolators. There's a little bit of tread left, but this is how I'm figuring she runs, is there's just rubber sprayed down the side here. It's too bad they painted all the chrome on this. Stuff. Plastic piece back here, she's disposed on. This changed the tail lights and the lock. I think the lock used to be down here or something. I don't know, it's up here now and these are here instead of here. Something like that happened between 70 and 72 compared to the 73 and four and five, maybe the six, not sure. Is this sparkles? Well, I believe it is. If I move like this, maybe? I don't think so. Anyway, back to the car. There's not a lot of rust in the thing. A little bit down here, got some muffler tapage. A little tiny bit down there, maybe. Got a flat tar, that's weird. But I mean, I don't got hail damage. Nothing like that, it's not banged in. What about rust over here? A little bit right here. And that's pretty much it. Other than that, it's a solid rig. Did you hear that door? Listen. Well, it didn't shut. Listen again. Wow. Body by Fisher, maybe. They made these in Flint, Michigan. I think Georgia and where was the other one? California. Got the badge up here as well. Look at this interior. I just never seen something so nice. Oh, got a rip. Let's bring her down to a B plus. That's okay. Dash is a little... It's seen its better days. Not quite sure what's going on with the lapidators. I think that's supposed to be up there. Maybe they were taking the seats out. I don't know why, but these are in great shape. It's been smoked in once. Light smoker. Let's find out. Oh my goodness. Hey, there's the door key. I'll be dipped. I was looking for that. What do we got in here? <clears throat> Nothing. Smells like burnt Pop-Tarts and sunflowers. Not quite sure what's going on in here. This is neat. I'll take it. I don't know. That's busted off. That's okay. Does it go up and down? Sure does. Let's sneak around the other side. Well, this ups the value by about 14 cents. Also adds six horsepower. Look at the floor in here. I need none license plates. I just can't believe it. But I guess I got to. I mean, I'm looking at it. Pretty rust free, actually. The odometer says 61,113.2. And look at the pedals. Are you looking at them? Okay. Look at the seat. Okay. Look at the steering wheel. Look at the armrest. Go ahead and look at it. Look at this. It's not busted off. Could this be. 61,000 original miles. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Clock doesn't work. Dang it. 
We got an AM and an FM and a cassette player. About everything you need there. I have no idea if any of this stuff works. Can't read any of the service records. Let's, uh, let's get the trunk now that we got a key. We can see what's going on. I just got to dig through these ashes real quick. That's fine. There we go. Bronchi. Dang it. What does this do then? I don't know. Does this one work then maybe? Oh, there we go. Whoa. All right. Yeah. Well, I just, this is pretty sharp actually. Got the original seam seal in it. See up here, down here. A little bit of rust coming through there, but it looks like a feller just tss, tss, right over top. That's fine. Same thing over here. You just ignore that and just tss, tss, cake it in. Get all the wiring and everything, you know, when you do that. But there's no holes. We don't have a lot of ventilation in here. That's pretty good, but no tire, no parts, nothing. We're off to a pretty good start. It's too bad they didn't leave this color. It's pretty sharp, actually. Guess the guy can't complain too much here. We go over here, we see the 350 to a 400. I'm going to be pretty positive that's a 400 SBC. You can see the smog system is still on it. So now we're going to have to delete on that as well. She's got the old two jet by Rochester on her. Them just, you know, bop, bop, they don't really do anything at all. I think this was 150 horse with the two jet and 180 horse with the four jet, but I could be wrong, probably. She's still on points. You can see the points cap there in the coil. Who knows how old them sparkulators are. Got the original Frigidaire in there. That's pretty nice. Battery was good. Let me move this dead mouse. What was that? <laughs> Something 20. Can't be too old, right? Very, very complete. But we definitely want to get this air pump off and all this stuff. It's just going to make our life easier, I think. Yep, agreed. So we've got a pretty loaded up. 74 Monte Carlo with the Land Dew 400 small block. I would assume it's probably a Turbo Fire 400. That's what they called them, I believe. So they had a 305, a 350, the 400, and the 454 for kind of the options back then. We got some hosage unhooked. All the lines are in it. I mean, it might be a pretty decent going to town car, actually. So I guess the next step is we'll just jam the key in it and see what happens. I reckon a guy could have checked the oil or something, but we're going to change on that anyway. She's sitting here idling really nice, actually. You can hear that air pump just going to town. I didn't have to nurse it or nothing. got dual pipe elators. Just saying. Sounds pretty good. Well, let's go find an air tank for that tire and then we'll ease her into the shop and that'll at least know it runs. I guess the guy should drive her in instead of back her in, huh? Whoa. Whoa. Definitely needs a tune of an up. Bringing up this hill, miss the snow machine trailer, bring her down here, across the yard, why not? Do I gotta mow already? Marv, stop mowing so much! Whoa, that's the building. Yeah. Probably 
just check really quick. Does not power brake. In fact, she quit on a guy. Dang it. So this YN142 supercharger here makes about five to six pounds of boost with this pulley combination. When this was shiny and new, it was on my Chevelle for quite a few years, but it only had a couple hundred miles on it. And then we put it on that Corvette down in Florida and well, it drank quite a bit of fire and debris and fire extinguisher and miscellaneous objects. <laughs> You're on fire! <laughs> So needless to say, the Teflon is pretty tough. You can see all of the scoring and scratches and everything else. So this is gonna make about 12 horsepower, so that's good. I think I got the pulley and the belt and the cold snack that goes with it. I got some other bolts and hardware. Picked up a new set of Felpro intake gaskets. Got some rid of. This is a fuel make it happener that was lit on fire several times and then I dropped it and bent all the linkage up. So this is just fine. We'll bolt that on. Got a new set of intake bolts here. This is a used HEI. I'm not even sure. I've got like 15 of these, but looked like a decent lightning cap and storm maker. So we'll maybe use that. But I've also got this Belette one here. This is by MSD or Holly. This has a rev limiter built in. Quite a bit of digital goes into this guy, but the nice thing is you get that rev limiter and it's just a better unit all the way around. So not quite sure which one I'm gonna use yet. And then this is some stuff I picked up today. It's about $220 worth. Um, oil, filters, had to pick up some lightning hoses here. And uh, I wanted to put some, some sort of observation units on there. So we've got some water and oil. No one ever uses volts never seen them work and of course we got the italian tune-up in fact we could probably start with this rick's oil filter and then you can see my air cleaner here i drank in some fire it was weird watching the fire was doing this and then it curled and went right into the old unit there but it's not bad enough where you can't reuse it right so we'll do that but first let's do some italian tune-up clean them valves up a little bit, maybe bring the rings back around just a touch before we get working on everything else. We want the engine nice and piping hot before you start working on it. That way you don't get severe burns like that one. Hmm. Makes sense. Remember how we had that stumble off idle? If I barely cracked the throttle, it quit or died or choked or not move. Look at this. I think a guy's gonna try to clean up some of the mouse droppings and nest everywhere. And it's so thick in the intake in here, I can't even see the bolts really. So I'm gonna get the air nozzle and try to clean this up a little bit, you know? After that, I'll probably drain the rad just a little bit, get these hoses off, and then get the charging whirler bracket to start tearing all the hoses and linkages and whatnot. Lightning whirler's gotta come out first, pull all the lightning hoses off, and then pop that intake off. It is hot in the shop today. Look at the floor, just moisture coming through the concrete. It's hotter than 90s Christina Aguilera, and I ain't kidding ya.
Yep. Mm-hmm. Pretty well got her stripped down, I guess, you know. So now it's time to get that 97 pound intake off, clean up the heads, and then we'll get to sticking this guy on here. I think it's pretty decent. I gotta clean this up just a little bit, ever so slightly. That side is decent-ish as well. Get that glued in, that's kind of the biggest step here. And then we'll come back around in the future and pinch off all these EGR tubes and clean up all the stuff that I kind of cut and snipped and just ripped out of here. Another thing we got to work on is the throttle bracketry. This is a factory unit here and, you know, no worky on new unit. So I think they make some sort of aftermarket something or other. Basically, I just need this piece right here for that cable bracket to slide into. Might be able to even just make something. I just need that chunk and we can maybe come down into this bolt. But we'll take a look and see if O'Reilly has something on the wall. Super cheap. And I mean less than 12 bucks, you know? Otherwise, we'll just make something. But once we get this on, then we're really cooking. The rest of this just bolts on fairly easily. Still need to figure out if I'm going to go with the standard HEI. Here's the points ignition here. You can see the contacts in there. Whoa, almost lost her. I keep these, you know. You can make an oil prime tool out of them. or They're just nice to have around as a spare. And then you got the HEI unit here. Coil up top, of course. And then this is that billet one. Just a lot of digital and I haven't decided if I want to get into it that far quite yet. But I was looking, I think I found a pretty decent spot for that. If then a guy was the user, could a guy just bolt her in right here? I don't know. I suppose he probably could. Battery, coil, lightning whirler. I mean, it's all fairly closer S ish. It's pretty neat working on an engine that's pretty much all factory in here, other than the chrome rocker covers and the lightning whirler bracketry. It's neat seeing all the original hardware and how everything was hooked up and kind of laid in here. Not very often you find a small block Chevy that hasn't been just completely worked over. Okay, enough talking. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's hooked in here? I don't know. Keep pulling, maybe that's oh, how I got this hose. I just can't believe. Okay, well that's out. Well, I will tell you a thing or two about a thing or two. I have seen a lot worse than this in my day, plus two additional days. It's actually relatively really clean. And it just makes a guy sit here and wonder, are we really dealing with a poorly painted 60,000 mile original Monte Carlo? Or is this just a really, really well maintained 160,000 mile Monte Carlo? I don't know. I don't, I mean, I don't know the answer to that question. Maybe you could just bleep bloop it down below in the comments. Let me know what you think. I mean, the seats and the steering wheel and the pedals and the armrests, the condition of the engine, all kind of leads towards 60,000, but why would someone take the top off and horribly paint it and put some, I don't even know what kind of wheels on it. It just, it's not making sense in my brain is what I'm saying. Got the heads all cleaned up in here. I like to just stuff some rags down in the intake ports there so you don't get any debris down in there. And then I just take a cheek poker mounted to a drill or a angle iron grinder or whatever you got and just hit her with some brake clean, hit her with some air, hit her with some rags, hit her with some brake clean, a little bit of raggage again. And then, you know, you basically got this at this point. I did take the oil sending dummy light unit out. I'm gonna put in, you know, some sort of gauge back there. I'll do that really quick before I slide the intake in. And that's pretty much it. Don't forget to check for loose nuts or Legos or wobble pop tops or 
anything like that that you might leave in the engine or down in the intakes because that's you know it's not going to be good feller when you fire it up mary's bow staff i almost got carried away but i didn't i brought her in got the brass fitting in for the oil pressures there and then i figured guy malls will make sure what kind of engine we got here and chevy is always super easy there's a casting number right back there behind the valve cover and then there's another one up here on the pad underneath the charging whirler which will tell you truck car date plant all of that and i'll see if i can dig in here this is going to be a maneuver now get this out of the way a little bit i don't know can you see that i think you can 330817 which i'm 102.32 percent positive is a 400 small block 1972 to 1982 block main which is fantastic news that's really the reason i bought this car was the 400 small block in the land d package because you just you know you can't you just you know other than the 454 big blocks there it's there you know it's like a unicorn without the corn it's pretty good it's not the greatest well i've covered this about 48 times but just in case you're newer to the channel i'm going to shoot you into how to use gasket maker and put in the intake gaskets step three get rid of the rubber gaskets on the ends you don't want to use them when you torqueize this down they just shoot out the ends and you're going to end up with leaks just take some rid of and make your own gasket like that about a quarter inch thick on the back make sure you get into the corners here now because that's where they like to leak on the fronter and the ender and then these here just glue them into place feller so you're not trying to hold them and they're moving around i just use some rid of there's gasket schlack syrup whiskey spit oil whatever just get something that holds it in place let this tack up here in the front and back and then you just bring in that intake and boop blop her in and it should you know you should be fine you can even just give it a little shake like this seat it in and then just drop in your bolts there and you should be all right give them all the torques i think they're supposed to be 12 on aluminium but i go until the elbow pops twice that seems to be pretty good that's plopped in and just a reminder for whatever applications you're putting an intakes on you got to pay close attention to what your bolts are going into are they a blind or a through hole some of them go in the coolant some of them go into oil which is my case so while your engine front china wall end of the block the thing where the it's the end of the engines are drying up in there you know guy can come over here and start working on your intake bolts and i'm going to use some of this blue seal this time which is just a heavy duty high grade thread seal tape basically but you can use the same rid of or silicon and just do the last quarter inch here get them gooped up pretty good before you drive them in to the heads and that'll prevent any leaks i'm going this way because i'm not really sure i think this was given to me so it's free that and i really don't want to get my hands dirty because it's taco night and guys got to be shoveling food you know picked up a new cheapy water neck and it's got the o-ring and the hardwares in it and to offset the cost because i didn't want to use this one with the old i don't know some sort of there was a bleep blooper on there i don't know it does something anywho i was going to use this thermostat and don't let the looks of it you know scare a guy you clean this up pretty good and use it and to test it just take a little propane torch and <laughs> Hit it with some heat on the bottom, and this spring should contract, and you'll see this little missile in the middle there squeeze down and open this up. 
And I was going to test this, but then I noticed all of the thermostats should have something printed in them. And this one says 192. And that's just a skosh and a tickle too warm for me, I think, for summer. I'm going to put that back and pretend I didn't see it. And I'm going to go ahead and spend the $3 and pick up probably a 180 or a 185. We'll see what they have in stock before I put this uh, water neck on here. Well, a guy FFWD'd on you a little bit, but don't worry, I got updates just coming right out of my eyeballs. Lots been done, but it's mostly just small tanking around and do dabs. It takes up a bunch of time. But I got the digital fan in down there, you can see. I got that wired up and that included a digital circuit breaker offer and a relay. And don't let these little fellers spook you. They're not that bad. It's just power ground, obviously your device, like a fan or a fuel pump and then a trigger, which in this case is a temperature sending unit. I was just gonna hot wire it in and just run around a toggle switch or my favorite is the fan motor over here. If you blow her up on high, turns on whatever device, but this fan kit actually came with the relay and all that stuff, so popped it in. Got the old sparkulators out. They were 44 TS's, which is probably my favorite plug, but I put a 45 TS in right now. Gapped them to about 30. We don't want them candles blowing out prematurely, you know. And we'll take a look at them after a couple wide open blasts, see if we need to make adjustments based on the ground strap and make sure they're self-cleaning. Also got the water neck on, charging whirler. Got the old air pump off, this assembly here. And that's probably, I don't know, 79 horsepower? Nope, it's more like 1.7, but we'll take it. We'll take every bit. Dropped the lightning whirler in. I think I am gonna try to use the Billat one with the 6AL timing ignition control lightning storm box. That way a guy gets a rev limiter which will be nice, we could just bounce it off of that. I got it set to about 12 degrees initial timing. A couple different ways to do that. You can just set it to top dead center, which I always recommend anytime you pull out your lightning whirler. And then you can point your lightning rotor at your number one or where you want it to be, which is the red dot there for me. And then Roll your engine over to 12 degrees or wherever you want it, 10, 8, 6, I don't know. You're picking the timing, I'm just telling you how to do it. And then you come up here and just turn your base until they line up again. Or just cut all that nonsense out, set it to whatever timing you want first. And then just line them up up here. Good rule of thumb is about a quarter inch. So you can see here, that's where the dot was. I'm at 12 degrees. So just turn your base about a quarter inch. That'll get you started, anywho, and then you can fiddle on it from there. Still gotta bend these pipe laters off from the smog system. Just gonna vice grip them and this one might go This one looks like maybe a this way. Probably leave that one hard to get to. This goes on here, I think, somewhere. Yeah. I did test fit this already because this alien looking thing that I wanted to keep on here. And sure enough, had a clearance issue. Had to zzz this off right here so the case could get, you know, that way. And then I didn't have the space of a do hippie that comes in these kits, of course. So I just ran a longer bolt in and put a nut on the bottom and pinched them up. I don't know. It's in there, I guess. Shorter belts on. I mean, things are moving. Sure seems like I'm doing a lot, but really nothing's really changing. Great. So I'm not even sure where I'm at now. I guess we try to get the actual blower case on and we start running lightning hoses and just keep creeping forward. Did I lose this hose clamp? Oh, it's on the end there. Didn't see it. <laughs>
think I pretty near got it where a guy could put the fuel make it happen around there and start running the lightning hoses and things like that. This is a long snout if you're curious. I think maybe two of you are. Oh, three. And then there's a shorter one as well. So you got to make sure you get the right one for the application. And I got a long one because they fit on a lot of A-body cars, big body cars. Uh, and even in some cases, you just have to trim the shroud a little bit like that Corvette when you can see it clears the water pump and everything. I mean, it's pretty tight, but I didn't have to do any trimming whatsoever in here. And I'm glad I went to that digital fan because I would have had to have done that anyway. But onto the fuel make it happener. I just finished cleaning this up a little bit. This is the one that's been lit on fire and dropped a couple times. And it just continues to work. I don't know why. It's a good unit. I've had this for many, many years. I'll just throw that on there. There we go. Ooh, that got bent up pretty good too. I just need to connect all of that. Got some vacuum upper lines to connect, linkages. But I'm gonna do that probably last. I just wanted to get it on there so I could start running the lightning hoses. How am I on hood clearance? Probably not good. Darn, I was hoping I could get away with without cutting the hood, but we'll have to just wait and see. I'm getting really excited to fire this thing up. I just have a feeling this 400 is just gonna sing to us. Other than cleanup out here, I think the guys pretty well got her dialed in, got the fuel line in, brake boosterizer line in, got the vacuum line to the trans, linkage is done. So that's pretty much it. I got to get the gauges in. Right now I've got a oil pressure fitting in the back of the block there. I almost forgot about it. I was thinking about cranking on it, but I was also just thinking and chuckling. I literally have never even driven this car more than on a trailer and off a trailer and into this shop. And I just put a supercharger on. So that makes perfect sense. Hmm. This here, I think I'm gonna put, I don't know. I was thinking maybe there. Uh, you know, it just seems like, this seems like probably the best place to put it. Getting really close though, after I get those gauges in, I'm gonna change the oil just because, and then we can take this thing for a test drive and see how she runs. Hopefully the transmission works. I don't know, you're gonna find out. Guess I'm gonna crank on her, build some fuel pressure, and see if we can get this thing fired up real quick. That did not go as planned. It actually fired right off. But I had a massive vacuum leak. I could hear it. I mean, it was, you know, succulating there. Didn't even have to spray it. And then I also had a coolant leak that was shooting 74 gallons of coolant everywhere. One of the old hose bursted. So 15 minutes and 48 seconds later, I'm back down to this. Great. So here's what I got. This gasket has been reused, I don't know how many different times, and I just don't know if it's got another one in it, which means I would have to probably overnight one or try to figure out where to get one. The thing on my widget that screwed into there that had a pipe later shooting off that way was just spraying stuff everywhere. Tried to shorten the hose, but it was pretty rotten. I don't even know where I put that thing. I think I threw it away. So I just put a plug in it and capped it off back there for now. The other issue is the bolt for the water neck housing is hitting over here, right there. And that might be contributing to my vacuum leak as well. Have to be really careful torqueizing these down. If you get them tweaked 
just a little bit, you bind up these fillers and it makes them not happy. That sounds weird. But anyway, so I'm gonna go and grind that bolt off, get some more clearance, maybe smooth this out with the file again, just a little tiny bit, go back, put this back on, torque it down. And hopefully this time it doesn't sound like 17 dying animals with liquid spraying in the air. That would be favorable. <sighs> Wonder what Clint Black's doing. Hmm. Here's the thing. I like you. I like you quite a bit, in fact. But wife's got meatloaf in the oven, so I think I'm going to go ahead and just shut her down for the night. Time did just get away from me, and I ain't kidding you. I did get it all back together though, so we're in a good spot for tomorrow. Basically come in, fire it up, do some fine tuning, and then we'll drop that Earl, change that quick. Gotta find some decent gasoline. And then we can go scoot this thing around and test on it a little bit. See you in the morning. Well, guy brought his mobile communication device in my flannel. If everything goes as planned, we'll break down. Should look, I guess. We got oil pressure. I have not touched the fuel making happener yet. Oh, does the digital fan even kick on? Confirmed, digital fan is running. Here we go. Oh, do I got money? I think so. I got like 14 bucks for gas. Good enough. The Lasabinator just sitting out here all majestic like do i got wipers in this how do you run them i heard a click nothing great at least it's not raining no nope, it is okay here we go okay test drive here we go test drive over only got first gear crazy about the grass around here I can't see nothing but what is going on with the oh there's first for sure whoa second second gear all right I just I was hesitant there for a minute not shifting out a second now Boy, she just floats. Oh. Okay, I went to third, dropped a second on its own. That was a kick down. All right, so we're either low on shift juice or maybe the vacuum modulator is busted or unhooked. Sometimes the, there's a little rubber, it's a, it's a hose is what I'm saying comes on hook. Temperatures are doing fine. Still can't see. I wonder if that's a fuse maybe. Probably not. Could be. Clock's not working either. Does the clock hook into the wiper fuse? Probably not. Hmm. I mean everything else is... Yeah. Dome's down too. I think we might just have some fuse blowage. Okay, let's turn around. It's making boost. Went in the second, but it's really hesitant. Maybe seconds enough. It just wants to ease around, you know? I mean, shoot, I'm getting 50 out of it. Seems like plenty. He's flood. Hope he doesn't get crop wash. My goodness. Are these soybeans? Probably. <laughs> That's like quarter throttle. There it did that shift thing again. That seems like a line pressure issue. 
I'm thinking that's going to be the modulation because it modulates, you know. Let me swing into the garage really quick. Crawl under this before we scoot to town. And uh, just, you know, hook the peepers on it real quick. Fan's doing great. Also figured out the issue with the windshield wipers. Yeah, they're just, you know, there's no wipers. I wonder, I think a guy could borrow on this one. Maybe. See if that fits. Well, that's incredibly too long and big, but is it a dumb idea if it actually works? Look at that. I mean, it only hangs out three inches. Just gonna shoot it off down the side, you know? So that's fixed. Anyway, back down to the transgression. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on there. This is probably one of the only vehicles I have that's you know got a whole frame in it slide under here take a look there's the modulator there's a hose on it uh this is tight in here oh there you go see how that vacuum line is separated that is going to be the issue because this guy right here is something that assists or controls line pressure and there's a little screw in there if you take that hose off and you can actually adjust your shifting firmness just a touch but i gotta get that hose off quick of course i had to go get the exhaust 7914 degrees <sighs> that was easy anyway this is what broke and that's what was causing the issues right there well let's hope anyway <laughs> Second and third, just like that. We got wipers, we've got gears. What else does a guy need? I think we'll just scoot down to the gas station here and ba -ba 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 gasolina. Something like that. And then we'll, we'll put the foot in it. Not gonna get much traction today, being it's raining, but it's still gonna be fun. Now the question is, are we even gonna make it to the gas station? traffic in the middle of BFME. Gonna be a lot of pedaling today. Traction is an issue. We'll start from, I don't know, 40? Now let's go a little faster. All right, this is a roll from 45. Okay, now I am really excited to get this on some dry pavement. All right, we'll try it from 30. I think that's a pretty typical roll point. Make sure I got no cars up here. Here we go. single wheel peel so I do not think we can get a cookie out of this but doesn't mean we can't try well we just 
just lay patched till 70. Approved. <laughs> them up enough to get some smoke coming out of them, you know? This 400 small block moves out, and I ain't kidding you. And I'm not even, never once touched the rev limiter, so it's still got a lot left in her. I'm just kind of waiting until we can get some dry ground. You know, I was pondering on maybe selling this old girl, but after that test drive, I'm going to hang on to her for a bit, at least until we can get her on some dry pavement really see what this thing can do. I'm already thinking about a mini spool in the rear, changing a couple other things, but you guys could throw your ideas down there in the bleep bloop section. Let me know what you want to do with the old girl. And just a reminder, still looking for some names. Give me some ideas there. I've always liked the Monte Carlos. I love the Chevelles, but these are like a classier Chevelle, basically. The interior is just a little bit nicer in my opinion. But of course, this changed after the first generation. And not a lot of people love these cars, but I think they're kind of coming back. They got a little bit out of my range when they did the double stack headlights in the front, but pretty nice looking rigs. The quarter panels are just really aggressive. I like that look. But that's gonna do it for this episode. Car went from sitting for who knows how many years Never even drove it, threw a supercharger on it, went for a first rip, ton of fun. This 400 small block absolutely gets down and eats the onions. Thanks guys for watching. If you're not subscribed, surely would really appreciate that. It's free and easy. You just click the button. That's it. See you next time.